a good personal development book can quite literally change the trajectory of your life and your perspective. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the three books that I think every man should read. And these are the three books that have done that for me. They've changed my perspective and they've changed the trajectory of my life. All right. I would also recommend downloading an app called Audible. Um, I'm not you know, sponsored by Audible. Um, I wish I was. I mean, that'd be badass. But um, yeah, it's just made reading completely effortless for me. And in the last, I think, two or three years, I've, I've read at least a book a month, um, probably usually closer to two. Um, so I highly recommend, you know, if you're someone that can't get yourself to just, you know, read physical books, I just never really was able to get myself to do it very often. Um, I highly recommend like listening to audiobooks. It's just completely changed the game for me. So um, but let's dive into it. So book number one is The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida. All right. I found this book while I was in college. I think it was like my senior year in college at, at AM. Um and I read it at a pivotal time for me. So I was early on in a relationship that I'm still in now, right? And, and it completely changed my thought process when it comes to significant others, all right? And the dynamics of relationships. So it also just helped me kind of form my core values as a man, you know, early on in my 20s, kind of just figuring out who I am, kind of come up with some of those core values and what I believe in and stand for, right? So here's some of the kind of main takeaways that I got from this book. Um, and I'm confident, you know, they'll help you in some way as well. So the the first takeaway is living with purpose, right? And the book emphasizes living a life where you're clear on your purpose or your mission, okay? Um, and Dida encourages like men to discover and commit to their deepest purpose and not be distracted by short-term pleasures. Okay. So this, this just had me thinking, you know, early on about what is my purpose, kind of figuring that out um, and like really committing to it and not letting, you know, short-term pleasures and being pleasure seeking derail me from that mission. So that was kind of the first um, point that I took away from this book. Um, the, the second point would be dealing with challenges and it talks about, you know, challenges and resistance are opportunities for growth um, and should be embraced rather than avoided. Okay. So this took me like a long time. I would say like, I didn't just immediately grasp this and adopt it in my life right away. It took me, it took me kind of a while to conceptualize this. Um, but you should want, you shouldn't want an easy life, right? You shouldn't want your life to be easy. Um, that's that's not a fulfilling life. You should want to grow stronger so that you can handle anything. And like I said, like this this took me a while. It's not like it was just like a switch I was able to flip like that. Um, but challenges and obstacles help you grow stronger for future challenges and obstacles, right? So it's like anything you're going through right now, um, it may seem like it's really tough in the moment, but then you know odds are something similar is going to happen to you in the future and you're going to be more equipped to handle it because you've already been through it, right? So just know that like any problem is is pretty much universal. And so when, once you solve it once, you know, you'll be able to, to handle it better when you come across the same problems in the future, okay? So, so like I said, like don't wish for an easy life, you know, try to grow stronger so that you can handle anything, right? The, the other point in this book was talking about like masculine and feminine energies. And this was never really a, something I, I had thought about that much. So it was really interesting to me and had me thinking about masculine and feminine, feminine qualities and energy, right? So understanding this, will have you looking at your relationships from a completely different perspective, right? When you think about things in the perspective of masculine versus feminine energy, uh, it just makes you start thinking about the role you play in your relationships a whole lot differently, Okay, and, and that those polar energies, you know, masculine, feminine, kind of like polarizing your relationship can help with with attraction and things like that. So it's super interesting. I found it very eye opening. Highly recommend looking into that. Um, another point is emotional awareness, you know, specifically within men. Um, and the book encourages 
men to be aware of their emotions and to express them truthfully and directly, right? So I, I used to kind of bottle everything up. I've talked about this before where I've just tried to like stifle all my emotions. Um, you know, that when you do that, it's kind of like a spring, okay? It's like you, you're pushing down that spring. Eventually it's going to explode up um, and you're going to kind of explode all your emotions all over the place, okay? So we're taught as men to kind of, you know, hide our emotions, but you have to feel your emotions and learn to use them to your advantage. Okay. So the book goes more in depth than that. Highly recommend, you know, kind of looking into that when you read the book. Um, another point is just relationship dynamics. And we talked about that a little bit with the masculine feminine energy, but it offers advice on relationships, just suggesting that men should maintain their independence and not become overly dependent on the relationships for emotional emotional fulfillment okay so it's you shouldn't be fully dependent you know in being codependent in a relationship you know you should maintain your independence um and not just be relying on your significant other for for like emotional fulfillment and, and all your emotional needs okay so that that was a big point on relationship dynamics and the last point i'll talk about on this book is living at the the edge Okay, of what you're capable of. And Dida advocates for continual growth and always pushing your comfort zones. Okay, so this this is going to be the, the way to live a fulfilling life by doing this. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand with finding your purpose and your mission, but then kind of taking to that next level and always pushing and always trying to increase your skill level, push past comfort zones. Okay, so highly recommend it. Once again, this is called The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida. That's that's the first book I'm talking about that completely changed my perspective on life. Um, so let's dive into book number two. And this is going to be Atomic Habits by James Clear. And this is a really popular book. It's really gotten popularized. Um, and I, I have a lot of my clients read this book. It's very helpful. If you're someone trying to um, adopt new habits into your life or just improve your, your habits overall, this is like the book to go to. Okay, so Atomic Habits by James Clear. All right, so the book starts out by kind of emphasizing the importance of just making tiny changes and how they compound over time to, to lead to significant results, right? Sometimes it takes small things, but they just compound over time to lead to, to drastically different results in your life. All right, so it starts out by talking about that, and then it talks about the four laws of behavior change. Okay. So these, these are, I'm going to name them and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on them after I say what they are, but they're make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying. Okay. So let's go a little bit deeper into those. So making it obvious. So increase the visibility of these habits that you're trying to adopt. So obviously like me, you know, I've got a gym in my apartment like it's very obvious, right? So that's that's one example of that. Um, making it attractive is make the habits you want to adopt more appealing. Okay, so doing things like, you know, maybe buying new gym shoes or running shoes to make yourself get to the gym or run more, you know, just these little things to make these habits more attractive for you and make you, you know, have a little bit more fun or look at it in a different light. Okay, so those are just a couple of small examples. Um, making it easy is reducing the friction associated with you and the good habits that you're trying to create. So again, the, the gym in my apartment is another example. It's it's visible and it's it's uh it's making it easier. There's a lot less friction. Like I never really have an excuse. It's right there. Right? I, I don't have to drive to a gym if I really, you know, am really feeling lazy. I usually drive to the gym anyway just so I kind of get out, but it's just less friction. I never have an excuse, right? An example of making it um Less easy for some bad habits, on the other hand, is like putting a lock on your pantry so that you have to, every time you think about getting something out of the pantry, you've got to unlock just that little extra friction. Um, another example is putting the remote for your TV, like in your closet. So it's just a little more friction between you and that habit of watching TV. Okay. Um, making it satisfying is ensure that good habits are immediately rewarded. Okay. So an example of this is like when I was cutting and I was getting very strict on my diet, after every workout I did, I would have like a little bit of chocolate, like a little small square. It was very portioned out of dark chocolate. And it was just that little reward that every time I got a workout in, you know, I was able to have that. Um, it made sure it fit my calories, but, you know, gave me that little reward after each workout. So that's an example of that. 
Now let's talk about habit stacking. The book goes into habit stacking, which is uh, something that's completely transformed the way I build habits. Um, an example, a very you know relatable example here is that I started listening to audiobooks like anytime I would eat a meal or do some cardio, go do some steps outside to get my steps in. Um, I would listen to an audiobook. Okay, so um, that's an example of stacking one habit on top of another, right? Instead of having to build a completely new habit out of thin air, a lot of times you can stack one on top of another, right? So I was already eating, I was already doing cardio, might as well stack the habit of listening to a book on top of that, and they go hand in hand, okay? So habit stacking can be super powerful. Um, that's one example. You know, there's plenty of other examples how you could stack one thing on the other. Um, meal prepping is another example of a habit that you, now I was already doing laundry every week, right? It always took me a little bit of time to do laundry. Um, so now I do my meal prepping while I do my laundry and I listen to an audiobook at the same time, call it kind of my power hour. Um, so that's another example of stacking. That's three habits stacked all on top of each other. Okay. So try to find ways that you can do that in your life, make including new habits into your life a lot easier. All right. The other point is environmental design. Um, changing your physical or digital environment to make good habits easier and bad habits harder. So I've already given the example, obviously, environmental design of my apartment being a gym. Um, but an, an example of the digital environment making bad habits um, harder is I've made my phone actually black and white. <laughs> so uh, literally, it makes being on my phone a lot less appealing, makes it harder to even do certain things. It's just not as fun, right? So being addicted to your phone, if you're someone like, you know, you just get so much dopamine hits, you can't stop scrolling TikTok and stuff like that. Put your phone on black and white it can make things a lot less appealing and honestly has cut my screen time down a lot. Um, I'm still on my phone for a lot of work things, but it's not like I'm just mindlessly scrolling TikTok all the time and doing you know stuff for my own pleasure, right? So that's one example of that. Um, the last point that I'll talk about with uh, at Atomic Habits is tracking and accountability, okay? Um, I tell my clients all the time, we can't manage what we don't track, right? Literally, there's studies that people that just weigh themselves on a on a daily basis lose more weight, you know, given all other things controlled, like if that's just the one difference these people make, they lose more weight because they're they're aware of where they're at every day. And if we if we track things, we're able to um, actually see more progress, okay, and, and be better with our habits. Okay, so tracking and then accountability, like maybe in a group, you know, have have mentors, things like that. These things can be huge with sticking to your habits. Okay, so tracking and accountability is huge. I mean, join, there's tons of free groups out there. I've got a free Facebook group. It's called Accountability Machine. Um, you know, there, there's things that you can do. Just, you know, get around other people that have like-minded goals that you have and try to track as much as you can. Track your your progress, track, you know, your, your workouts, everything like that. So tracking and accountability, absolutely huge. Cool. So let's talk about book number three. So this is the last book I'm going to talk about on this list. And again, it was it was hard to narrow it down to three. I've read a lot of good books past few years. Um, but the last book I'm going to talk about really resonated with me. And it's Flow by, his name is crazy, Mihai Chick Mihai. Man, the spelling of it is insane, but <laughs> um, it's The Psychology of Optimal Experience by Mihai Chick Mihai. And the book's called just Flow, right? So the definition of flow, according to the book, is a state of complete immersion in activity. All right, it's characterized by a sense of fluidity between one's body and mind and feeling um, and being fully engaged and focused on the present. Okay, so conditions of flow are clear goals and immediate feedback, um, a balance between the challenge of the task and the individual skill level. And I, I want to really dig into that point right there. So to get into flow state, you know, you have to have clear goals, goals and immediate feedback. Um, but I really like this point of the balance between the challenge of the task and the individual skill level. Because this was very interesting to me. So, you know, if you're doing something too challenging, right, it's, it's so challenging and your skill level isn't up to par, you're not going to be in flow, right? You're going to... Um, 
but you want to be challenging yourself enough. It can't be too easy as well. There has to be that balance between the skill level that you're at um, and the challenge of what you're doing. Okay, so you have to be always pushing the boundaries on, on challenging yourself, but make sure that you are improving your skill level to handle that. And that's when you're in that flow state. When, you're, when you've got that balance of the skill and the challenge, that's when you're in that flow, okay? Um, and then the other point is, com or the other condition of flow is complete concentration on the task at hand. You can't have your head at multiple different things. Like you have to be completely immersed at the task that you're doing and, and be where your feet are, right? So these are the conditions to get into flow state. I'll say them one more time. It's clear goals and immediate feedback balance between the challenge of the task and the individual's skill level and then complete concentration of the task at hand. All right. Now let's talk about flow and happiness. All right. Because Mihai Chick Mihai, crazy name. Um, he talks about how it's contrary to what a lot of people believe, but we don't, we're not happiest just when we're sipping Mai Tais on the beach, you know, just relaxing and stuff like that. We're happiest when we're actually challenging ourselves um, and we're, and we're immersed in something uh, towards like a goal that we're trying to accomplish. Okay. So experiencing flow regularly is key to happiness and improving the quality of life. That's what Mihai Check Mihai talks about. So flow in everyday life, flow can be achieved in various aspects of life, including work, leisure, and personal relationships, right? It can be achieved in anything. Um, finding ways to turn everyday tasks into more engaging and challenging activities can increase the frequency of flow experiences, right? So if we can find ways to turn even the most mundane, thing, mundane things, um, like brushing your teeth, like if you can just find ways to challenge yourself and kind of compete with yourself on a daily basis, you can get into full flow state more often, all right? Um, so yeah, the, I'm not going to go too deep into flow state. I, you know, I, I've only listened to that book once and I, I've listened to Atomic Habits and um, The Way of the Superior, Superior Man multiple times. I just really, you know, I listened to Flow State pretty recently and I, I thought it really resonated with me, completely opened my mind um, to the way of looking at the world um, and happiness and things like that and fulfillment. So highly recommend going into that. Again, these aren't complete summaries, but these were some of the main takeaways that have served me well so far. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Check out these books for yourself. I'll say them one more time. It's The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida, um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and Flow. It's just called Flow by Mihai Check Mihai. You'll have to check out the spelling of that. But <laughs> um, yeah, if you liked this video, guys, then please like the damn video. Subscribe for more personal development content like this. I'll see you all in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.